Ladies and gentlemen, it's not that I'm scared, it's just that I'm terrified. <laughs> Anybody remember where that comes from? Yes. You know, my reaction to the attribution of this incredible honor, first of all, you know, I felt inadequate so many times in my life, it's not even funny, and tonight tops them all. Second of all, as a Catholic boy that grew up in Italy, I was looking forward to this event <laughs> with some anticipation. <laughs> and the warmth of the welcome and the affection that I felt coming into it here has felt such you know, I've been, all of my life, I've had this deep love and deep respect, the word is love, but respect, admiration for Judaism, for Jewish people, for everything Jewish, that has been a constant theme throughout my life. I've been waiting for an evening like this all of my life, so thanks so much for the opportunity. And especially, Thank you, Yossi, and thank you, Esti. So my reactions, I've told you, I'm overwhelmed. I've told you that already. And the third reaction, however, is, so Rabbi calls me and says, we are going to give you the Global Impact Award. Think of the name. So I thought, the rabbi probably thinks of me as some sort of a meteor that wipes out dinosaurs. <laughs> That's what global impact brings to my poor English, right? <laughs> but I thought it was a sign of affection, nevertheless. And I said, sure, I'm going to be happy to do this. And you may be wondering, how come I've gotten in touch with the rabbi? Of course, throughout the history of great personal relationships that I've had with the country of Israel, with many Jewish people, throughout my life has been a recurring theme. But there was one fateful day last summer that my youngest daughter, I should introduce my wife first. My wife, Paula, is right here. Here is Paula. Thank you. We grew up together up in the mountains of Italy. We got five children. And with the youngest of the five, one day that Paula was away from town, her name is Federica, young lady, 19 years of age. I'm a very lucky father. She says, Papa, I know that you like to do the things that we used to do when we were children. Why don't we go out and go bowling? I said, oh, what a lucky man I am. I said, sure, let's go bowling. So we went bowling in Bel Air. You see where I'm going. <laughs> the bowling alley, 2 o'clock in the afternoon in August is completely empty, it's just my daughter and I, and we start rolling those balls. And shortly after that, a gentleman walks in with four little kids. Some of them hold the ball like this and drop it, and then it goes very slowly towards the pins, and they are right next to us. So naturally, I'm striking up a conversation, and I love children, and naturally, as the kids come up and they roll the ball and I start giving them high fives and I say, great job and all of these things. And the gentleman is looking at me kind of like, who is this guy anyways? <laughs> but then, of course, being a very polite and refined gentleman, also enters into a conversation with me and so we talk. And I ask him, what do you do? And he asks me, what do I do? And I tell him I'm a Methodist and I do this and that. I could have guessed, right? And he says, well, I'm the rabbi of the Shul of Bel Air, and I felt enlightened. And I said, what a great opportunity to learn a bit more. So we talk and we share. And there was one magical moment when said rabbi rolls the ball and he hits a strike. And for whatever reason, I said, oh, that's what they teach you in rabbinical school. <laughs> 
And then at that point, the ice was broken, and every time I was missing my whatever I was trying to do, he said, you should have gone to rabbinical school. <laughs> and, a friend, and a friendship was born, and the kids were having fun, and everybody was very happy. And you know, throughout all of my friendships that I was telling you about, I've picked up a few words here and there that have to do with Jewish tradition. And I was talking about nachas, and I was saying mazel tov, and everything I know. And so he started asking me, are you Jewish? Said, no, look. Sir, with all tremendous respect and love and admiration, I'm not. And then he would come back, another little word that I knew, and then he would ask, are you Jewish? Said, no, I'm not Jewish. We went back three or four times. And you know, I still wasn't Jewish. <laughs> so end of the evening, I go home, I go to bed, and the great day, he was kind enough to invite us. Later on, actually, I had the first, you okay? Shabbat dinner of my life at their home. And just the memory of that brings tears to my eyes and goosebumps, how important it was and how wonderful it was. So I go home that evening, and I wake up like at 2 o'clock in the morning, thinking, I told the rabbi that I'm not Jewish. I, I don't know. I don't know. So I pick up the phone. I call my mom in Italy. <laughs> it's seven hours difference. So it's two o'clock for me. It's nine o'clock for her. I say, mom, tell me all about our history through the war and beyond and before. And she tells me, and I pick up all of the last names, and I write them down. And I'm starting to shake the genealogical tree. And, you know, and then I got all these friends in Israel, and I got a friend in particular that runs uh, you know, the, 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 the Museum of the Jewish People in, in Jerusalem. And, you know, and his name is Haim Giuseli. And I, and I write to him and I say, look, I, look at all these last names I got from my mother's side. That's the important one, right? <laughs> he said, hey, can you recognize anything in your registries? And he goes back and he studies and he writes back to me very kindly. And I keep looking, I find more than whatever, and I write to him. And we go back and forth for weeks, for months. And then one faithful day, he writes to me and says, well, professor, nice try, but I've run out of all possible <laughs> options. And there is nothing that is coming out of this, the genealogical tree, you're shaking as much as you can. But he was very kind, and he told me, however, you know, the registries are incomplete. Unfortunately, some, rec <laughs> some records were lost. Some people didn't call in, you know. <laughs> and it was being very kind, please come and visit, and I hope that I will next time I'm in Tel Aviv, which I try to do several times per year. And I know it doesn't count as much, but I haven't looked at my father's side yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm planning to do that, true story. I don't know anything about my father's side. It was, we don't want to know all the stories. But, uh, but, you know, in two weeks, I'm going back to Italy. I've hired a private eye to help us look into the various secrets, and I hope that the rabbi will invite me again next year. Perhaps I have a surprise ending that I cannot provide to you tonight. <laughs> Let me tell you a couple of stories. So, so again, this is moving. I've been waiting for you guys all of my life, I really mean it. This has been an unbelievable experience, an unbelievable night, and I'm just shaking with emotion. This notion of the healing and the impact connects me to the great mission that I've had the privilege of carrying out at the great institution that you all know, Houston Methodist Hospital. So let me take the opportunity to introduce just a few people. We have several people here from Houston Methodist, just representing them all, the chairman of my board, Mr. Mark Hauser, and Mrs. Hauser is with him. <clears throat> Executive, Executive Vice President, which means the really, 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 really important boss, Roberta Schwartz, is right here, and her husband <laughs> just left. <clears throat> Our Senior Vice President for Spiritual Affairs is the Reverend Dr. Charles Millican, right here, a Methodist minister. <clears throat> and it is with him during the times of the event the events that we have regularly, that we dedicate to medical ethics in association with the Holocaust, we have this great event where we have uh, 
of course, uh, rabbis and exponent of Judaism, together with the Cardinal De Nardo representing the Catholic Church, and of course, Methodist ministers. And when you put together the rabbi, you know, it's of course, rabbi and the cardinal and the Methodist minister, kind of sounds like the beginning of a joke, right? <laughs> but I mean, we continue to do this in the spirit of sharing that I think we embody here tonight, and I'm so honored that I have the opportunity to be here to speak and to share in this wonderful event you know, with all of you. I'm reminded you know, the great rabbi Yossi has given me the book about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and I've been going through it, and I've been learning so much from it. And one thought that comes to mind is uh, the situation where in occasion of the, of the very sad ethnic strife that was taking place in Brooklyn around certain days that you cannot remember. And of course, Mayor Dinkins was addressing the Rebbe and saying, let's come up and do this and that and the other so that we can make peace on both sides, both sides. And the Rebbe said, look, there is only one side. And that is the spirit and the feeling that I feel tonight. And thank you so much for that. On the Methodist side, you know, it is a leading hospital. I hope we've been able to take care of you. And you know, we are always there at your service. It's been a great experience for me to be able to serve in the Methodist hospital system, doing research and helping with the clinical activities. You know, we are top ranked hospital in the state of Texas and many things you probably are aware of, of Houston Methodist already. My good friend, Dr. Mike Perry, was kind enough to make reference to this recent discovery that we were able to report in Nature Biotechnology. The opportunity for the first time in recorded oncology research to be able to cure, I repeat the word cure, metastasis to the lungs and to the liver that come from breast cancer, in particular triple negative breast cancer, and it is something that we have demonstrated beyond any doubt in multiple animal models, and now we are moving to translate into clinical trials very quickly. On average, in the United States, which is still the best country in the world to do these things, from scientific discovery to clinical fruition, on average, it's 17 years. That's an ethical tragedy, it's a travesty. I don't know how as a community, the whole world has painted itself in the corner that way. Think of how many people unnecessarily suffer and die. Houston Methodists, we decided to be leaders, not only on the research side, but also in the trend to clinical reality. So we are looking to start the clinical trials 12 to 18 months from now at your service. And you know, all together, all one community, all one common enemy. That is the dinosaurs that I want to see extinct with our global impact. And I'm comforted by the story that I presume many or most of you are familiar with, uh, the famous expression of the, of the Rebbe when discussing atoms, considering, of course, the devastating effect of uh, the bombs that were dropped in 1945 in August, he made a remark to a rabbi by the name of Herbert Weiner and told him, look, think how the infinitesimally small can pack such an infusion of great power by the power of the Lord. And if that can happen for nefarious, for bad, negative, for warfaring reasons, why shouldn't that be true also for everything positive that is packed inside all of us? And of course, the fundamental technology that has enabled us to do what I'm just telling you is nanotechnology. Is technology infinitesimally small. So I feel very comforted by these words of the Rebbe in support of the notion that the smallest of things working together for the right reason at the service of the Lord can produce true global impacts that I'm here hoping that I'll be able to celebrate with all of you at, at your service. So thank you very much. This has been an unbelievable opportunity. I will never forget the great joy 
the great love, the opportunity to be with all of you. I've been waiting for you all of my life. <laughs> and so thanks again, and uh, God bless you all. But thanks for the applause. I appreciate all of that. I applaud the unbelievable developments that in five short years have happened at the Shul of Bel Air under the wonderful leadership and stewardship of Yossi and Esti. That is where the applause should go. And allow me, applause is good. But the pocketbook is also very good. I don't mean to say better. I am committing to helping and supporting as a good Catholic boy, so in love with this wonderful community that you all are. I hope that you will join me. Thank you very much.